say that um, just sort of talked about this time, this particular time, but um, you know, the, to be brown on stage already is giving you something to deal with, to be queer and brown and tattooed and then to be working in these other forms. Um, I feel like there was an earlier on a way that we had to think in a, a different way, like how here are these formats that we know we're familiar with, stages and, and demonstrations and you know it was the same thing with sort of learning how to be a passive resistor. You know, that took a sort of a somatic <coughs> approach. And I think that the more that we saw the needs of the things that we had, like the way that we needed to communicate, um, the forms sort of just show us themselves, like show themselves. Yeah, one, one of the things that I was um, struggling with early <coughs> on was really a need to translate the politics and experiences I was having as a, as a member of ACT UP and an activist and, and trying to bring that into my work. And I felt at a certain point I was realizing that, the, that, that I couldn't really ultimately have the same uh, effect in my artwork in a limited audience than what I was actually doing on the streets. So that kind of shifted my whole awareness of what I was making with my work, sort of after 1993, and just beginning with the memorial dress, I kind of shifted it all. And, 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 and I, I like to deal with the codes and the imagery, and, and it's always different if it's in a sort of museum or gallery space. As I love the street surprise performance. I love to just mm -hmm. appear as a thing with no context, context for art. And that's really a satisfying experience for me, whether it's walking down the street with gender fuck look or um, doing a big dress in the middle of space and you know the, the, the kind of spontaneity of, <clears throat> of the street guerrilla performance is really what I love. So like a, the even <coughs> modification, there's no context when I get dragged through the street for really what's going on. I don't have, sometimes I've had people with information Especially because I could be arrested myself, and you know, you don't ever know what's going to happen. Don't be dressed in that outfit, right? Yeah. So, so <laughs> that, that's an exciting thing for me as an artist uh, to, to push those limits for myself, and then uh, know that I'm going to, you know, present a very variation of images to 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 the audience, whoever they might be. But, but I'm also thinking about the, how the street has changed in New York City over the last 20 years. I mean, you're talking about the sort of, you know, Times Square feels like the dentist's office these days. It's so clean. And so you, but the high and the low is where we get a lot of the energy from the street. And so I'm just interested, I mean, HIV is part of why we're having this conversation. HIV is still running rampant. And you, you can't really, you haven't had a conversation about, a real conversation about sex in the public sphere for a long time. And yet I think in order to do effective HIV prevention, it might be worthwhile to have that kind of a uh, conversation about public sexual culture. And so I'm just wondering how can art help us have that? I mean, you were part of an incredible campaign a couple of decades ago about that, but how can art help us have that conversation about the street and about HIV prevention and public sexual culture, if anything? I think that hopefully um, just the f first part of it would be that we are just trying to make it so that we can break down some borders between us and the work. And sometimes I think those, um, I mean, in my work I feel like the way that border is broken down is I sort of feel that I put my body on the line for this kind of long period of time where you can come and go from your experience, which is ultimately the intimacy of what a sexual experience is. I, I feel like one of the, the things that I, I feel that have influenced my work the most was sort of having a, a very active and, um, and very difficult but exciting you know, life of non-monogamy and to be able to descri describe, discuss, create that kind of, um, I don't know, just to have a, a life that has a sexual element to it. And I think 
you know, we are this sort of strange generation who had a lot to say. It was the sort of first time you were seeing lesbian. I mean, the Click Club makes its space because lesbians were fucking, and everyone knew they were fucking there, and they got to be the first people to come into the room, and no matter what fag wanted to come in, you know, like everyone had to wait to let the women go in first. So, um, Somehow, I think that sort of the, the body on the line um, element is maybe the very first and the most powerful part to get to the intimacy that we're talking about. Absolutely. Also, um, what, uh, that, the stuff that happened in the 90s can't happen now because it, it's it, because of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can't have sex or do something on stage and have it be in the moment and stay in the moment. So everybody is sort of like, you know, meeting up and hooking up online. So it's like really compartmentalized. And so the conversations that would happen in those spaces where there was sex going on, people were doing negotiations in person with all these people around them. That, that, uh, those things don't occur anymore. So I don't know how to, uh, how to intersect those things when people have their um, their assignations so separate from their social life. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think that that is one of the great um, powers that still exists with live performance because you still get a group of people in a room and they are focused on each other. In the room or in the street reacting and the, you don't know what's going to happen. You never know what's going to happen. I, my favorite line from Short Bus is I'm just trying to get out of the room with a little, with a little dignity intact. So uh, anyway, <laughs> with that in mind, um, I wanted to see if anybody had questions from the audience. We have an amazing audience. So um, just, I'll go try and, do, try and do stack in the dark if possible. Jim, do you want to start and then I've got you.